Hi everyone, I'm Steve Miranda. I'm the Executive Vice President of Oracle Applications. And today, it's really the favorite part of my job, is I get to talk with our customer and our partner. It's my pleasure to welcome today, Michelle Green. Michelle is the Vice President at Discover Financial Services. Welcome, Michelle. Thanks, Steve, for having me. I'm thrilled to be here. So, at Discover, uh, many people probably know Discover as a digital bank and a credit card company. But, you know, you guys are much, much more. You help small businesses, you kind of do loans to, to people, individuals, there's student uh, help as well. Maybe can you give a bit, bit of a longer introduction to your role at Discover and then kind of what separates Discover from, from other uh, financial institutions and, and really what is your uh, driver and motivating factor that, that separates you from the rest? Yeah, well, thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited about this conversation today because I think it's a great opportunity to accentuate our partnership mm. as well as all of the accomplishments of our As One team. And you're right, Discover is so much more than just a digital bank and credit card company. We're also a payments provider. And we genuinely have a relentless focus on prioritizing our customers, our payments partners, as well as our employees. And our mission at Discover is all about helping people have brighter financial futures, and who wouldn't want that? Yeah. So as for me, uh, first and foremost, I'm a wife and a mother of a 17-year-old daughter going on 25. Wow. <laughs> right? I'm, I'm right with you on that. <laughs> and, and then throughout my career, I've really grown to be a strategic business leader. Uh, and then through the years, I fell in love with technology, as well as helping make positive global change. And I think that's where we got introduced to one another. Um, I joined Discover about three years ago uh, to lead our digital cloud transformation and, uh, and develop our as one team. So a lot of the principles that I believe in of developing an as one cohesive team, which in our case is Oracle, of course, mm -hmm. my amazing Discover colleagues in Accenture, we all work together. The principles that I believe in is that as one team, the innovative partnerships that we've created, and then really empowering people to use their superhero powers. Mm -hmm. And so when our three organizations came together, we kicked off uh, Discover's digital cloud future, as well as continuing that journey for our customers on their digital financial journey with us. Well, we're really proud to be part of that group, but along with uh, Accenture and Discover. You know, it's interesting, you said you started three years ago. So I, I you know, for a while now, it seems like longer, but I guess it's about two years. Just a dramatic change for, for the world. I mean, I can imagine, you know, with your family and the daughter that age as well, it's just, just, you know, all the stress that people have been under. And you talk about kind of building a brighter financial financial future for people. So can you give us just a brief, over the last two years through the pandemic, what has changed? What is different? What are some of the pressures? So while you're going through this digital transformation, sort of macro, what was happening with the business? And, and, and how did all of this craziness over the last two years really affect uh, you discover and Discover? Yeah, great question. I think we can all agree, and I'm sure Oracle experienced the same, is that the pandemic has literally been the single greatest health crisis that our globe has experienced uh, in over a century. I think specifically for Discover, we have a relentless focus on our customers and our employees and our payments partners, as I've mentioned as well as building our capabilities. And so for us, it was all around prioritizing our customers. So we extended our payment terms. Yeah. We waived fees for our customers so they could get access to their accounts and, and not have those extra dollars coming out of their accounts. For our traveling card customers, you know, we had helped them navigate yeah. travel cancellations, which I'm sure you right. had those right. too. Right. My husband and I did for sure. For our payments partners, many of them weren't digital. So we had to help them charter that uh, unnavigated space on, on what digital means for them. You know, as it relates to our employees, in that first two weeks, we started working from home straight mm -hmm. away. And I am so proud to say that while we were prioritizing the health and safety of our Discover colleagues, when we think about how we were servicing our customers, by the end of March of 2020, our call wait times were less than 70 seconds, mm -hmm. which is remarkable considering our culture is really based on being in the office mm -hmm. uh, in that and all while that was happening, to your point about our digital cloud transformation, we did it remotely for 22 months. And at least in my experiences, uh, I've always done you know, on-prem technology implementations together in one physical space. And so for us to be working remotely in 22 months was just a miraculous feat when you think about what each of us in our organizations and as humans were experiencing dur during that time between the impacts of COVID, 
the racial injustices, the inequalities, and and how our, our team literally kept the program on track yeah. for us to be able to say that we delivered on time, under budget, and in high quality. It's amazing. It, it's amazing to hear that and to have at the end a little footnote, on time and under budget. Just kind of gives us some perspective <laughs> for people who've done these implementations. Yeah. You know, it's funny, when I thought about, you know, naturally, in thinking about Discover, I thought about, well, the payment terms, et cetera. I didn't think about something that's, you know, from a consumer perspective, relatively simple or expected, like the cancel of travel and things like that. Oh, but it yeah. must have been amazing stress for you guys along with everything else. Yeah. You know, when I used to speak kind of pre-pandemic with CFOs and, and CIOs and the like, it would be about the, the need to change fast and how cloud really afforded that. So how did Discover, how did you think about you know, why was cloud important? Um, what what kind of drove the decision making to move to the cloud? You know, obviously made before the pandemic and, and just kind of maybe not so much how it affected it, but but what was the thought process behind it? And why was it important to you uh, as a decision making factor to, to be part of that digital transformation? Yeah. For us, it was really a straightforward decision. You know, we had an enterprise-wide strategy of moving to cloud mm -hmm. as well as simplifying our landscape. So Amir Rooney had joined uh, our organization as CIO, and that was a big focus for him of making sure that, you know, we found opportunities to simplify. And at that point, the, the fun part became, okay, well, what does that mean for our organization? Because, you know, all of our finance feeds they weren't cloud ready, so we had to develop a, a cloud data fabric. Um, we had an opportunity that we had to do end-to-end -end integration testing, which hadn't been done before. You know, our program was all around pulling out seven systems and putting in our three Oracle cloud applications, and you think it would start and end there, but for us it didn't. And with that, we had to figure out what does that mean for the data? You know, so our program was really centered around, you know, four things. It was more than just that general ledger implementation. It became more about data, innovation, value creation, and simplification. Right. In those specific areas, because we didn't know what we didn't know, I often refer to it as, you know, the spider's uh, yeah. nest that yeah. when you start peeling it back, you uncover more things. And for us, when we did our data requirements assessment, the first four months of our program, what we learned was our team had identified some anticipated benefits. They thought this is much more than technology. It gives Discover an opportunity to be a better business partner because we're gonna be able to access more data and higher quality. We're gonna be able to do the value creation. You know, cloud is that mindset that it shifts to developing partnerships and continuous improvement. And the third thing is just efficiencies in the ways that we work. You know, our, our architecture was so heavily customized that people were using their own tribal knowledge to get done what yeah. they needed to get done. And with the cloud applications and that standard functionality, our people got to learn new ways of working and then tailoring their ways of working to the standard functionality and processes. I mean, what you said there was so critical that I really see over and over with projects is taking it more than just, let's say, the software, the service from Oracle and data and business transformation and, and, and people transformation. So yeah. no doubt that that contributed to the on time and under budget success. Now you mentioned the seven environments and then you talked about the the, the spider web I think was your yeah. example. And <laughs> sometimes that's systems and sometimes that's processes mm -hmm. is too. So you're able to take those seven, uh, move it to a single instance uh, in the cloud. How are we doing on the benefits? Benefits expected versus, you know, achieving versus expected something unexpected that's been a benefit that now that you're live, you know, you've seen. What's the scorecard so far in terms of the benefits? I love this question that you're asking me <laughs> and I'm so excited to share that our as one team, I think the results that we're seeing out of the gate, it really goes to show how they came together, their attention to detail, the high quality that they did throughout the 22 months. Because again, to your point earlier, when you start doing implementations and over and over you realize what I'm about to share with you is unusual. So there's two things I look for in an implementation to kind of gauge where we're at. The first is when people say the implementation was a non-event. Yeah. The second <laughs> is when people start giving unsolicited feedback that they're loving the systems. On day 15, post go live, we heard both. Great. Yes. So January 15th, you know, after everything that we had all been through through the pandemic, we had people reach out to us to say, hey, 
loving the speed of the systems, we're loving the access to the data, and we're loving being able to tailor how we're engaging with the standard functionality. And you don't hear that often. So the fact that we did out of the gate, I, I can share with you that a coined phrase that I have now is that we won the digital cloud transformation Super Bowl as one team. That, that's great, that's, that's just fantastic to hear. It's amazing that when you get that feedback from the, you know, a lot of times, naturally so with these changes, sometimes some trepidation, particularly from people, as you described, mm -hmm. are, you know, tribal knowledge, and they're used to doing their job. But at the end of the day, what we're trying to do is really make people's job easier, and then that access to information, hopefully some tangible benefits immediately, but then as things change, you know, hopefully important even going forward. I hope we don't go through a change the last two years, but, but there will be another change coming. Yeah. For sure. So speaking of change, now you've been on the journey uh, during the implementation and beyond. And one of the things that I talk to a lot of customers about is, listen, look at the product today, but also take a look a year ago and two years oh ago gosh. to see the features <laughs> coming to just get a sense of the velocity. Yeah. So how, you know, we, we talk quite proudly about our quarterly updates and defect resolution and improving technology, but also new features at it. So how have you been able to take advantage of, or what's your feedback for us on the, on the quarterly updates and, and the innovation you're receiving now on a regular basis? Yep. So I think there's a few things that I think are really important for people to know about cloud. I mean, we were just, you know, laughing before this to say how much smarter we are now two and a half years later than we were when I was at Open World in San Francisco in 2019. In addition to the, the updates there's that mindset shift that I mentioned about cloud. There's the continuous improvement, there's having the strong and reliable partnerships are, are key. And so I think for our team, as they're figuring out what does cloud mean for us, we're seeing green shoots of benefits, you know, such as we did shift to a product-centric structure to self-support the applications, which as I understand in our Oracle ecosystem, that's very unique mm. in and of itself to not have a system implementation partner alongside us. Right. So I'm so proud of the team for developing the partnerships to be able to do that day one out of the gate. The second is developing that inaugural stakeholder community so that there's that two-way dialogue between our stakeholders and end users, as well as the product team, mm. as well as Oracle bringing that information back to you mm. to think about how we evolve it. And we've had, had those conversations with the EPM product. Mm. And then I think the, the third thing that we're also seeing is those efficiencies and the ways of working. Mm -hmm. You know, with that continuous improvement mindset, what does it mean to take those updates, whether they're maintenance or enhancements, yeah. and having that two-way dialogue between our end users to say, okay, this new functionality is coming out. Yeah. This is how we believe it's going to change our processes or our controls, training, yeah. and ways of working. And our people are figuring that out now, and I'm just I'm so proud of them for, for working through that. I will say that that's um, it is uh, pretty unique and somewhat unusual to be able to take advantage in that way. And that that phrase you use, continuous improvement. I mean, I, I know maybe in our industry we've used it a lot, maybe even abused it in, in historically. But now we really truly feel like you have the opportunity to do that. It, it's a much more nimble product. It's more and features and and frankly, by doing that, you're able to strengthen our partnership because you get more out of our innovation. Whereas, you know, in the past when we had an on-premise product, we deliver innovation, but when customers can't use it, it's, it's, it's a very different uh, circumstance. Now, you talked a number of areas, you touched on sort of the success of the program and, and, and getting rid of the, the, um, the spider web, I think is what you called it, and the processes. So what we hear often is, is just some level of trepidation or on the other side of it, a level of confidence that needs to be built. Can you maybe describe either how it worked at Discover or maybe some advice for you know, some of our prospects or customers out there who are you know, where you were two and a half years ago and about to start, right? Yeah. How did the team come to the level of confidence that, yep, we're running our business, I think what you said, you know, non-event, but there's more and able to take advantage of it. And that, that reliance, a kind of, you know, leap of faith that this is going to be there for you and this is a more, though it's different, it's a more modern way and hopefully a better way of doing business. Yeah. Kind of what turned it there at, at Discover? Yeah, that's such a powerful question. Um, there's a lot in that. I would say the things that jump to the top of my mind immediately is please, 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 whoever is getting ready to do a cloud implementation, don't think it's just taking out systems and putting other systems in. As I mentioned earlier, there's the data and the interfaces. And most of us, when I speak about corporate America globally, will 
have to think about what your on-prem architecture look, looks like and how you're going to interface that to the cloud. And that really relies on the data and those data feeds and the data mesh, you know, is the common industry term around that. It's so much more than that, though. It's about the strong partnerships. It's about the reliable relationships. It's about having people at all levels across our organizations, Oracle, Discover, and Accenture working together to figure out what's the best next path forward. And like, for example, on EPM, it's a tool that Discover really pushed the technical boundaries. Mm -hmm. And your team stepped up, helped us figure it out so that we could keep in standard functionality. We had a guiding principle. We weren't going to do any customization. And, you know, when I look to Rich Wilkie and Tim Gamont and the team, they were miraculous in helping us figure that out. And it was obviously super stressful as we got into it because of the volumes and what we were trying to do with replacing the heavily customized systems with uh, the standard functionality. But they lived up to that creative innovation. And then... The third key point that I would say that's really important to remember is don't underestimate the cultural change that it's going to take internally around how do your functions work together. So in our case, our finance folks get to learn technology speak and our technologists get to learn finance speak. Mm. And so it really creates that really positive dynamic of each of us learning each other mm. and how ultimately that functionality and automation works in our case to make you know more effective enterprise-wide business decisions. Mm. And then lastly, the importance of partnerships. No, that, that's great. You know, Discover is now growing and thriving, and you're going to be adding thousands of, of jobs going forward, and hopefully our Oracle partnership is helpful in that way. How are you going to use Oracle going forward? If you could look a little bit into the future, and how can we be helpful in that growth path to continue on, on Discover's mission? So I'm proud to share that we at Discover view our relationship with Oracle as both a business partner as well as a technology partner. And, and that's really important to say that, you know, Oracle, I think, is known as a technology company. It's more than that, though. You know, there's, I think, several win themes that I've gotten to know about Oracle over the last 22 months that have been critical in us forming our reliable partnership and strong relationship. You know, the first is being proactive. You know, second, I would say, is the constant access to innovation that you bring to the table, as well as your responsiveness to feedback. You know, as you know, I'm not shy yeah. uh, in sharing my thoughts. You know, just in terms of the proactiveness, you guys provided us a customer success team that fully integrated into our, our program and transformation. So kind of relates to that as one team concept that I talked about. The second, that constant innovation, you know, as I mentioned, we pushed those technical boundaries of EPM. We were also pushing the volume, you know, constraints with the existing bandwidth and your product team helped us figure that out. Yeah. And then the, the responsiveness to feedback, you know, for our program to be successful, we needed to be with you in lockstep the entire way. And so one of the things that we developed was getting access to your senior executive folks. And I actually have uh, four of their cell phone numbers <laughs> that I have access to. And you guys let me call you whenever I needed you. <laughs> And, and you were so responsive. And that's what helped us stay on time, under budget, and deliver in high quality because everybody brought their superhero powers to the table. We're going to post everybody's cell phones on the <laughs> kind of ticker below here. You know, Michelle, I can't thank you enough for, for, for coming and joining us today. So much of what you said, uh, whenever, a lot of times when I speak with customers, I say, you know, uh, this is a lot about what we encourage our customers to do, but nothing, I mean, you've done it, you've lived it. So, you know, just a huge congratulations on the success so far. I mean, I think this is a... So much of what you said from taking it holistically from data and process and culture as well as technology, you know, the blending of the IT group with the functional group, having the, the kind of leap of faith, if you were, getting rid of the older, I love your spider web, uh, <laughs> both in business and in technology, and, and really focus on business goals. So, you know, just a great congratulations to Discover for all that you do in terms of uh, driving that digital transformation. Uh, congratulations on that Super Bowl win. And again, just a little footnote to the project for those of us who've done the ERP project for a long time, on time, under budget, January 15th, people happy with the project, you know, two weeks in. I mean, just can't thank you enough. And we very much at Oracle, on behalf of Oracle, just uh, thank you. And we really look forward to the continued partnership. 
Yeah, well, we do too at Discover, and I do genuinely appreciate you sharing your platform with me so that we can share the accolades about our team. And there's an African proverb that I love and that was one of our guiding principles on the program for you know Oracle, Discover, and Accenture. And it's around, if you wanna go fast, go alone. Yeah. If you wanna go far, go together. And what I love in that is that we did both together as one team. So thank you. Great, thank you, appreciate it.